Hi, welcome to part two in our three-part cabinet building series. Now, if you haven't watched part one yet where I show you how to do carcass construction as well as face frame construction, you might wanna go back and watch that one first. There's a little button up there somewhere. Anyways, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do drawer box construction as well as drawer slide installation. I'm gonna show you my favorite drawer slides, how to install them, and why you're never gonna to wanna to use another drawer slide for the rest of your life. So, watch this video, learn something, and stay tuned for part three, where I'm gonna show you how to do drawer faces. Drawer faces, as well as cabinet doors. So, enjoy. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a pair of side mount drawer slides and, well, chuck them on the floor. Shoot, you might as well even just stomp on them. Heck, just go ahead and throw them across your shop. You are never going to want to use those again. Let me introduce you to something just a little bit better, the undermount drawer slide. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by undermount drawer slides because there's multiple pieces. Like these little orange things, I mean, what the heck do they even do? But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to install them quick and easy and you will see why this is the best drawer slide you could use. I'm also going to show you how to install drawer slides and drawers for two different applications. On the right side of the cabinet, I'll show you how to install drawer slides for inset drawer faces. And on the left side, I'll show you how to install for overmount drawer faces. Overmount, left inset right. Got it? Good. Let's start with the overmount drawers first. You're going to start by taking a tape measure and measuring the distance from the bottom of the inside of your cabinet to the bottom of that top brace piece. Next we're going to take some scrap pieces of ply and just rip them down on the table saw. The exact width doesn't really matter but I cut these to three and a half inches just in case you're wondering. You also need two of them. Then taking our two scrap pieces, we're going to mark one for the left side of our box and one for the right side. Then we're going to measure three eighths of an inch over from the right edge of our right piece and we're going to transfer a straight line from top to bottom. Again, this line needs to be exactly three eighths of an inch from that outer edge. Then you're going to take your pieces and insert them into the cabinet and pull them all the way to the front until they are flat against your face frame. Putting the left piece on the left side and the right piece, you guessed it, on the right side, making sure that that line is exactly in line with the edge of our face frame on the right side. Then just taking a pencil, we're going to trace out the corner of each opening where our drawers will be inserted. It's also important to note that that left piece is pushed all the way over as far as it'll go until it is up against the side wall of our cabinet box. When you purchase the undermount drawer slides, they come with two slides as well as these little metal brackets. Now these brackets are super handy because they hook right on the back of the slide so that you can mount the slide inside the cabinet. We'll be mounting these little brackets to our pre-cut plywood pieces. Before we do so, we do need to draw a little mark 3 eighths of an inch over from the lines we drew on our left piece. Because these brackets do need to sit over on each side 3 eighths of an inch to line up perfectly with the front of our cabinet. But now that we have everything marked appropriately, all we need to do is simply put all of our brackets in the right spot. Our right piece is easy because we drew that 3 8 of an inch line, we can push those right brackets all the way up to the outside edge. Then we just screw them down. Now you can mount these directly to the back of the cabinet, but the point of these plywood pieces is that you can do all your mounting outside of the cabinet without having to fumble around too much inside the cabinet. Although that looks very funny and your friends might find it enjoyable, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You can see because we put those back nailer strips on when we constructed the cabinet, it creates the perfect place for us to sink some screws in and hold our scrap pieces nice and securely. 
Our left piece can get pushed into that far back corner and you'll know it's exactly where it needs to be. However, you will need to measure over from the outer cabinet wall to make sure that that right piece is landed in the correct spot. Should look just like this. Then with our brackets easily and securely on the back of our cabinet, installing the drawer slides is, well, it's just as easy as this. You just literally hook them into those back brackets and because these are for overmount drawer faces, they just rest perfectly on our front face frame. Then all you need to do is take one small cabinet screw per slide and hold them securely in place to our face frame. I like to set them back about an eighth of an inch to make sure our drawer faces sit nice and flush on the face of our cabinet. And that's all you have to do for overmount drawer face drawer slide installation. Wow, that was a mouthful. Now let's do our inset drawers. For this you'll need four pieces. That's right, four. You're going to take two of those pieces and you're going to drill pocket holes into both ends. Again, only two of the four pieces you cut and these should be the exact same size as the brace pieces you cut for the overmount. Then taking the other two pieces that you did not put pocket holes in, you are going to prepare them in exactly the same way as you did the other side. Just as if you were doing overmount drawer slides, hooking the brackets on and securing them to the back of the cabinet. However, the difference between the inset drawer installation and the overmount installation is that our drawer slides cannot rest on the face frame at the front of our cabinet. Hence the phrase inset, meaning they need to be inset inside our face frame. So we need to create a separate surface to attach our drawer slides to. This is where I take those two additional brace pieces with the pre-drilled pocket holes and I just attach them vertically from the bottom to the top of our cabinet. And well, like I said, I just, I hook them in place with some pocket holes. It's not that fancy but it does give us a nice flat surface for us to attach our drawer slides to. As you can see, this is where the drawer slide would be for an overmount, but we want it set back enough for our drawer face to sit internally inside that face frame. Again, we just hold each drawer slide in place with one small cabinet screw. They're very easy to line up with the front of your cabinet. You just want them perfectly in line with that front lip of your face frame. And voila, all of our drawer slides are installed. Overmount on the left, inset on the right, and now we have come to the portion where it is time to build our drawer boxes. Before we can start building our box, we first have to determine the correct depth and width that we would like our box to be. Now our depth will always be determined by the size of our drawer slides. For this project I'm using 21 inch drawer slides, so the depth of our box is 21 inches. The width, however, will be the distance between slides as you can see me measuring here, plus the thickness of our two side pieces. We also have to determine the height we want each drawer to be. A good rule of thumb when dealing with undermount drawer slides is one inch smaller than the opening of your face frame. Now you can make them smaller than that, you just don't want to make them any bigger. Because this is a how-to video, I decided to show you, in my opinion, the easiest drawers you could possibly make. Now most of the time when I'm building drawers for cabinets, built-ins, desks, etc., I build them out of Baltic birch ply. This is a great material to build drawers out of because it's stable so you don't have to worry about any seasonal movement and it cleans up very nice and makes a very attractive drawer. So after cutting down a bunch of pieces to the proper width for our top and bottom drawers, we need to add a little dadoed groove onto each of our side rail pieces. This groove will catch the bottom panel of each one of our drawers. Now that panel has to sit a half inch up from the bottom of the drawer side in order to allow clearance for our undermount drawer slides. So I use a spacer block to determine my distance from my fence and then I like to set my dados at a quarter of an inch which will allow the panel to sit nice and snug within the box itself. 
You'll notice that I'm not using a quarter of an inch dado stack, so you'll have to run each piece through twice to get a quarter of an inch dado for your bottom panel. I actually prefer doing it this way because I can micro adjust my second pass and make sure that my panel sits nice and tight within my drawer. Then with all of our pieces cut to the proper width and with our dado groove in place, we can start cutting all of our drawer box pieces. I like to start by first cutting my outer sides. Now we know those are going to be the exact length of our drawer slides. Again, I'm using 21 inch drawer slides. So we have four drawers in total. That means I need eight pieces cut at 21 inches. Then I adjust the stop on my fence to that internal measurement that we got off of the distance between our two drawer slides. For this, it's just over 13 and a half inches. So I cut eight pieces at 13 and a half inches. This should create a box that looks something like this. Next, you need to pick one of those internal pieces to be the back of your drawer. Now to accommodate our undermount drawer slides, we need to add a little notch on either side of those internal pieces. This will allow the drawer slide to sit flush against the bottom of the drawer. So I just mark over an inch and a half and one half inch up, and I just cut out a little notch on either side using the bandsaw. You could also do this using a jigsaw or a handsaw. Really anything will work. They don't have to be pretty because they will be at the back of our drawer and you'll never see them. At this point you should have four pieces, two side pieces, the length of your drawer slide, and two internal pieces, one with those notches cut out. And then we just need to cut our bottom panel, making sure that it is big enough to sit inside that quarter of an inch dadoed groove we added to all of our pieces. For my bottom panel, I'm simply using some quarter inch Baltic birch to match my Baltic birch sides. Then before we piece them all together, I like to pre-sand all my pieces. There is nothing worse than trying to sand the inside of a drawer after it's all put together. Then with all of our pieces cut and pre-sanded, it is time to start hooking them together. And this is how easy it is to do just that. I just add a little bit of glue to each side and tack it in place with a 16 gauge brad nailer. This method is by far the quickest, most efficient way to hook drawers together and actually makes an incredibly strong drawer. The orientation of the drawer here is key. The direction of the brad nails means that every time you pull that drawer open, you are pulling the opposite direction that the nails are actually put in, meaning you can never pull that drawer apart and it really will last a lifetime. You will, however, have some exposed holes from your nails on the side of your drawer. Now, if you don't like this, I typically fill my holes and with the Baltic birch, they blend in quite nicely. Another way to accomplish this exact same drawer is to skip the brad nails entirely and do pocket holes on each of your internal pieces. These pocket holes will be covered up by your drawer face and hidden on the back of your drawer and will give you a perfectly clean drawer side. However, doing it this way does increase the amount of time you have to spend on each drawer and when you're doing a large run for a large piece, I just don't feel the extra time really increases the look of the piece by that much. And I've yet to have a customer complain about the few small filled brad holes on the edge of a drawer. If you're not building drawers for cabinets or built-ins, maybe a fancy piece of custom furniture and you want a nicer look yet, I do have a video on how to do your own box joints. You can check that out by clicking the little tab in the upper corner right now. With all of our drawers glued and nailed together, I go over the entire box just with a little palm sander to knock down any of the places I missed with my pre-sanding. I also like to hit each edge with a small block plane to add a light chamfer just to soften the edge and de-splinter it. Then, as I mentioned, I like to go back and fill all of my nail holes just to hide them a little bit more and they'll be directly behind the drawer face so after sanded and finished they'll be practically invisible. Just like I was in middle school. 
Then whenever I'm doing a custom run of drawers for a client, I find that the drawer side is the perfect place to add my brand. Just don't be one of those goofs that doesn't take the two seconds to sand your brand afterwards. I hate that yellow border and so many people seem to just go with it. Ugly! And wouldn't you know it, our drawers are done and ready to install. Here's where those foreign little orange clicky things come into play. Now these are actually the locks that hook the drawer slide into the bottom of the drawer. They'll come included with your set of undermount drawer slides. You simply hook them in place with a few small screws and when you pinch these side to side they'll unlock your drawer from your piece allowing you to remove it. They also have these handy dandy rollers on the top of each piece that allow you to adjust the drawer from left to right after it's installed. You can also move it up and down with this little clippy thing. In addition to the orange clips locking the drawer in from the front, there are these tabs that lock the drawer in from the back. Now they make a bunch of different jigs that you can use to determine where to drill the holes for those tabs to sit in properly, but the easiest thing to do is just to insert your drawer into your slides and bang it a few times. It sounds silly, but your tabs will leave tiny marks and let you know exactly where you need to drill out your holes for those tabs to be accepted. Then all you have to do is take a drill with a quarter inch drill bit and drill a quarter inch by half inch hole right where those tabs left their marks. And here's where it gets crazy. This is how easy it is to install drawers at this point. You simply set them in place and push. Those tabs lock into those pre-drilled holes on the back and those orange clippy things lock into the front of the drawer slide, well, on the front and the drawer can be adjusted side to side with those little rollers. Installing is just like this. You push the drawer in until it clicks in place and your drawer is installed. They make another type of undermount drawer slide where it doesn't have the auto adjust rollers to move the drawer side to side. They're a little cheaper and I tend to use these for overmount drawer faces where I don't need that side to side adjustment. It only takes a few minutes to get our other three drawers ready for installation by adding our clips and drilling our holes. And then to show you exactly how easy it is to install drawers at this point, I'm going to install all four of these drawers in real time. One. Two. Three. Four. Now, wasn't that easy? On top of being incredibly easy to install, undermount drawers will give you the smoothest glide out of any drawer slide on the market. No, I'm not being paid to say that, I just really like them. I'll include a link to all of the drawer slide components in the video description below. As you can see here installed, we have the drawers on the left for our overmount drawer faces and the drawers on the right for our inset drawer faces. Then finally, I like to remove my drawers and finish them all with a nice coat of linseed oil, or in this case, I'm using Rubio Monocoat, which is just linseed oil. I like using linseed oil because I can usually get away with one coat of finish and it leaves my drawer box smelling wonderful. Not all chemically like lacquer or polyurethane. Well, hot dang, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, subscribe down below and hit that little bell. That's going to keep you notified when I release new videos, like part three that you haven't seen yet. So make sure and do that and maybe check out some of these other videos, like that one there. Ooh, that was a good one down there. <laughs> Bye.